Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. <laughs> so, as you can tell by the video title, um, it's not clickbait. <laughs> it really did happen and I never really wanted to make a video like this but I feel like I wanted to just share my experience and just talk about what I went through and just hopefully like educate some of you or if you're curious or something like that a little disclaimer i am not trying to like bash on this facility or like you know talk about mental health in a jokingly way because i'm gonna make jokes but um it's just gonna be my experience and what i went through june 15th 2018 i went or no i didn't go but I, I did something that got me sent to the hospital and I spent a night there while the doctors and nurses decided what they should do with me. And then that morning, they decided to transfer me to um, another hospital like an hour away. And I didn't know where I was going um, or like what I expected. I didn't expect anything. I just knew that I was being transported to another hospital, that's all. Um, I didn't know what they were going to do to me. And so I arrived and then I went through this whole assessment thing and they were asking me all these questions and the way I answered it, it, it made them believe like that was the right place for me and so um i don't know how long that took like 30 minutes talking to the counselors and then i talked to like three different nurses they all assessed me they asked me like the same questions and then the whole process took like 45 minutes and i checked in they gave me like my hygiene box and told me my room number and that was it and I looked around the hospital and it was just like, I was like, where am I? <laughs> like, what am I doing here? And so I got my things and I went to my room and they didn't tell me anything. They didn't like tell me what I could do or what I couldn't do. Like they didn't say anything. They're just like, okay, your room 102B. And then I went in and there was like two beds. I was like, okay, so I have a roommate. And so I got there, I just felt so alone. Like, it was like, you know, they took away all my phones and my, all my phones. They took away my phone, my charger, my everything. So I had like nothing but these high, these shampoo, conditioner, comb, whatever they gave me. And expect, expecting me to just do everything on my own. So I was just sitting on my bed and my roommate was in the shower. And so I just sat there like crying. I was just crying because I miss everyone. Like I don't have any type of like communication. Um, I just didn't know what to do when I just felt like I'm like in a different world. <clears throat> and so I was just sitting on my crying and then the nurse came in and asked me like if I needed anything. I was like, no, like I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What do I need? I don't know. And so my roommate came out and she was like, she's like, hey, like, how are you feeling? Um, you know, it's it's okay. Like if you need anything, I'm here to talk if you want to talk. But if, if you don't, then we won't have to say anything to each other. And I was just like, Wow, because you know everybody's in there for the same reason or not the same reason but like you know we have the same problems or like we're all struggling in there so um she just kind of left me alone and i just wanted a shower because i haven't showered in days and so i took a shower just to kind of feel alive and after that i walked out into the hallway like in the hallway you can only go you can only go to like basically two places or three, I guess. So your room, the activity room, and the cafeteria. That's all you can go. And they see everything that you do. And um, 
you can't really go anywhere else and it's just this one like like I guess L shape yeah so I took a shower and I walked out of the room into the hallway and I just looked around and I was like, I, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know what to say or like who they were. So I just went back to my room and just cried. And I cried like the whole night and until the morning. Um, I tried to sleep early because I didn't know like what was there, you know? So I, and I just wanted to get the night over with. So I just went to sleep. I woke up and I woke up really early. I don't know, maybe like seven. I woke up at 7 a.m. and then um, they were all, uh, one of the nurses came in and said it was breakfast time and so I was like, okay, so we have a schedule and I wasn't allowed to get breakfast. So basically I didn't get breakfast that morning because they said that on the first 24 hours you are under, um, you are restricted because they don't know how new people are going to react or behave or um, act around the other patients so they watch you just this you know for safety reasons and so I wasn't allowed to get breakfast in the cafeteria and I just went back to my room and I cried again because like okay so they're keeping me from eating like what do I do they didn't say anything to me and um, I just felt like I was in jail because they took everything away from me and there's like a whole schedule for us and I wasn't allowed to do anything because I was new but anyway so yeah I went back in my room and I was just crying <laughs> I did a lot of crying the first 24 hours I was there um, and I was just waiting for my breakfast because they said they were gonna bring it to me um, so time passed I was just walking around like the activity room and I didn't really go in but I just looked because I wasn't sure like what I was supposed to do in there and it was just it was a small room so I didn't like want to be in anyone's way or like you know I didn't want to sit in someone else's seat that they always sit in or something like that so I just stayed away from that and so um it was around noon now and noon 12 30 is lunchtime and the nurse, again, I went out because they said it was lunchtime and the nurse was like, oh, um, same thing, like you, you can't get lunch yet, we have to bring it to you. And I was like, okay. So I went in my room again. <clears throat> I was just like, what do I do? And I don't know, I let time pass. I don't know how long, but I went back out and then the nurse was like, oh, Melanie, are you hungry? And like, in my mind, I'm like, hello, yeah you guys didn't bring me breakfast um <laughs> and then and then another nurse was like oh do you want food and I was like yes <laughs> I do <laughs> and so they like signed me off and they gave me my food and they said that I couldn't eat in my room I had to eat in the activity room so I was like okay <laughs> so I went in the activity room for the first time and I was eating um I asked if I could sit there first. I, I was like, hey, can I sit here? The girl was all like, oh, my, my Nana sits there. And I was like, okay. And she's like, well, you can sit the one next to it. And I was like, okay. So I sat down in front of like this older lady. She, she looked like a grandma, not that old, but like a cool grandma. <laughs> I accidentally attended one of the group meetings. And what they do is like, they just, they have a social worker that talks to the patients and try to find like um, ways they can cope with stress or just talk about anything, whatever the topic is. And that topic happened to be um, building happiness. So I have my notes here too. Um, and I was just eating, listening to everyone, like all the patients, like point of views and their stories of what they've been through or, and what they're going through that's like helping them um, cope with whatever they have. Um, we all have like different reasons that we're in there, but pretty much the same. So we were going over the work, the, the sheet that they gave us. And one that stood out to me was positive journaling. This is what I really want to start doing because 
whenever I'm stressed out or you know going through some stuff it's usually all negative so I usually write out everything in my life and it's negative you know and I never really focus on the positive side so they say to write you know all the things that's positive in life so that you can focus on the positive instead of the negative and I really like appreciate that because you know it does feel good at when you get all the all your negative emotions out but you don't really see all the positives in your life you know so that's what I'm gonna do and the, the thing that I've been doing or saying a lot is um, my gratitudes so whenever I say one bad thing I want to start saying two good things that I'm grateful for because I complain a lot you know <laughs> and um, so that was like kind of the first time that I was like, okay, you know what? It doesn't have to be a bad thing that I'm in there. So after I spoke, I spoke to a lot of people, like social workers and counselors there, um, just to assess me and see how I'm doing. And then I finally spoke with the doctor and we went over, you know, everything. And I was just like crying to him because I told him like, I feel like I'm in jail, you know, because you, you took away everything and I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. And um, he's like, you know, just give it, a, give it a try. Like, try to go to these groups and just try to do things. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try. And then that group happened. And then I decided to just like stay out of my room because I, you know, I was just laying in my bed, looking at the ceiling, just crying. And the windows there, like you can't even see what outside. You can't even see like the beautiful landscape that's out there <laughs> because it's really nice where we were, but. We couldn't see any of it so the window was like frosted but like we only had like this much of like just clear window and that's just the sky so we can't see anything else and i get it like you don't want people to see you you don't want to see other people like in there but still like it was so depressing but um yeah i started going out more um i did a lot of coloring i mean this was a lot to me but i did this I did this on the 18th, so last Monday, I think. No. Yeah. And this. <laughs> and this is like my favorite one. Like a lot of the patients like this. And the nurse. I call this natural beauty. So natural beauty. <laughs> Yeah, I guess coloring really helped me. So I'm gonna start doing that again, you know. Um, I like seeing the finished product and just thinking about like where I'm gonna place the colors and what matches and stuff. I used to do a lot when I was younger and I think it's time to go back to that too. In these groups, the patients there like really opened my eyes because like they're so positive there and they're so nice like they're always complimenting me and like each other and just like lifting each other up and when someone is being like you know negative when they're bringing other um, people down like I've seen I've noticed that they just walk away because um, you know they're stressed out and they and they understand like oh am I stressing you out you know that's what they say when they feel that energy we all just understand each other like we don't have to say anything we just we just know you know and one of the things that one of the patients said was um, when we were talking about gratitude, she was like, one of the things that she's really grateful for is being in pain. And that really like, I was like, yeah, that's so true. Um, that night when I went to bed, I was in so much pain because I TMI, but I mean, I started my period. <laughs> and when I, in the first, the first day of my period, I'm like, cramping so much and it hurts so bad it's so hard to sleep and I was in so much pain that night and I just thought about what she said and I was like you know what like yeah I'd rather not be in pain and I'm so grateful that I'm not in pain every day like some people are in pain every day and it, it really sucks you know it was so inspiring like hearing how positive and knowing how positive everybody can be even though they're really struggling and it's, they're so easily like 
open to help other people even though they can't even help themselves you know we can't help them ourselves so that's why we're in there in that facility so another thing that i notice is that everyone that's in there is in need of attention like all they want is attention and to feel valued you know maybe they didn't get it as a child so they're struggling in adulthood and attention is just something that they they need to to feel like a person you know i guess for me that's what i struggle with too is that attention and <sighs> well i just want to show some things that i i wore when i was there like i didn't even get to wear my normal clothes because i didn't have any so i had to wear these big old scrubs every day and luckily i got to keep my jacket because if i didn't i oh i would feel so like out of place that jacket really helped me feel more like comfortable and more at home you know in a different environment and um the bed oh my god the bed was literally like one of those thick mats that you find in gyms like those mats and like a little sheet like a thin sheet it's so cold they have like the ac blasting too and they give us like a little thin sheet so i use this blanket that i that the hospital let me keep from um sf yeah i was in sf and they transferred me to somewhere else and so yeah it was this blanket um this was like everywhere with me and then i wore these blue scrubs oh my god this is disgusting but i just wanted to show this was what i wore the first night it's huge it's like so stretchy and so big like i could literally put my whole body in here <laughs> this is the top oh my god it's like this really thin like paper towel material this is the top it's like this boxy thing <laughs> and then i literally wore not these but like these hospital socks they're kind of gross these hospital socks every day every day the same one every day <laughs> it's disgusting um this was like a smaller size but it's still big this is what i wore at the mental facility and then the pants and then the the panties that they gave us oh my god it was like these boxer briefs that were literally just stitched together you know how like underwears have like that middle for for girls that middle part yeah i mean guys have it too i don't know but it was just stitched together and i couldn't even like oh pull it up oh i forgot to wash that and this is the comb that we had to use hello do you see all this hair do you see all this hair that's on my head and they expect me to brush my hair with this thing and it's so like <laughs> it's so bendy <laughs> my hair was just like Cause it was so nappy i just like brushed the top that's all i could do was just brush the top oh my gosh but i mean every morning i did uh, i did a lot of things that i wouldn't normally do at home like make my i mean i make my bed at home but just like just throw the blanket over my pillow that's it but there since i had so much time i made my bed i even sat down and like tried to brush my hair every morning and just find things to do because our day starts at 6 30 a.m and it ends at 10 p.m so you have and you don't have anything you don't have your phone you don't have like a laptop or anything so you have to find things to do and all that they provide us with are like coloring papers and some markers that have like a hundred orange and like two reds <laughs> And one blue something like that but and then we have like crossword puzzles we have like these ones they also come in like a bigger like a huge like poster size but that's all i really did was just color um gym time we have gym time too which is 
cool i mean but we do the same thing <laughs> we either color or like make beef so we got to make bracelets during gym time too and um it was like kind of like a half court size so only one person can play um basketball i mean not one person but like there was only one hoop and so when I was in there, um, I went to gym time. I'm glad I did because um, we get to, so there's like different units um, depending on how severe your your illness is. And I guess your age, uh, no, actually no, not your age. I guess how severe your illness is. We were placed with the elders and people with more um, severe illness. And um, there's this man who sat at the table we were making like bracelets at. So we were making these bracelets and um, I see him come to our table and he has like his whole like forearm of, of like full of bracelets and he even made like little rings, like that was his thing. And he, he has like, uh, I don't know what kind of um, illness he has, but he talks like um, like a child, even though he's a man, he's like an older man, but he talks like a child. Um, he was really nice, you know, but he was like, there was like three trays of um, beads and he liked to keep one. He had like a favorite one he kept. Um, I don't remember which one, but it was with the nice ones. Like, I liked them. It, it had like these ones, like the matte ones and like um, the, the hieroglyphic ones and iridescent ones. Yeah, it was really nice. And um, I was like, wow, you know, and he didn't let us like take any of the beads and the nurse had, had to tell him like we need to share you know like we're all like making it together <laughs> and then he was like okay <laughs> and it was time for us to go and then later on my last day there I, I stayed there for two days and it got really you know it got better um as the days progressed and I did I tried to do a lot of things that I wouldn't normally do um which was go outside, go to the gym and stuff. And so when it was time to go outside, I didn't really want to go outside because like it was kind of depressing. It was like this little like box where, I mean, it was kind of big, not really. <clears throat> um, it had like the grass and we got to sit on the grass and like sun bathe, whatever, tan. Um, there was like benches out there for us and we got to be out there with the same group that we were with in the gym. And um, again, I met the, the man with the, the bracelet and um, he was so nice. He was so sweet. He was going around like asking all the, um, the patients in my unit if we wanted one. And he got to me, he's all like, you want one? <laughs> he's like, you want one? <laughs> I was like, yeah, which one do you want to give me? And then he's like, um, this one. And then I was like, okay. And he gave it to me and put it on my hand. I was like, thank you. He's like, welcome. <laughs> and he went away and I forgot his name. Like, I don't remember and I wish I remembered it. It was something like Ernaldo or, or something. I don't know, but it has like basketball, schools and soccer. <laughs> but I mean, I just wanted him to pick one for me, whatever he wanted to get for me give to me but it was nice so I'm gonna remember this forever <laughs> so in in the activity room like there were happy times there were funny times I'm really glad that I met them they made me laugh like they were so funny one girl in particular like she's so sweet she's the one that like compliments everyone so always saying you're so cute like you're so nice. And that's how she talks too. Like she, you're so something. <laughs> and she's, she is on medication, you can tell. And it makes her say a lot of nice things, I guess. But it, it can also like give her anxiety. It was my last day. It was her last day too. She left before me. And um, everyone's just asking her like, what's the first thing you're going to do when you get out? And she was like, I'm gonna masturbate. <laughs> this, oh my god, she shocked everybody in there. I was like, like if you see her, you would not think that about her. Like you did not think she would do that kind of stuff, you know? And she's just like, yeah, she's like, it's fun. Like I have this um, 
this back massager that I use and I'm not even going to go into details. It was just no, no, no. <laughs> but I was just like, you, you that, what? <laughs> she was telling us she wants to like picture him while she's doing that, and she's like, she wants his D. She that's what she said. She's like, I want his D. Like, I was just like, girl, what the. <laughs> And like right next to him, it, he was sitting right next to her while she was saying all this, and oh my god, he was just like, like mortified. <laughs> I I can tell. Like, she's something else, <laughs> but she brightened the room. I made some friends there. I'm I really, you know, I miss everyone. Uh, I'm really concerned. I really wish that I knew how they were doing right now, but. I have no way of contacting them and you know that sucks because I know that they're struggling I really want to know if how they're doing you know life after jail <laughs> no it wasn't that bad I mean honestly like today I was thinking about it and it's so different coming back from that place living reality right now it's that place is way better than reality like you don't have to worry about anything I didn't even think about social media I just thought about like I need to get better so I can like get out of there and now that I'm out it's like I have all of these like responsibilities and but I learned a lot um, I'm learning not to not to let everything just pile up and just bring me down um, they repeated like one thing at a time, one day at a time, one one hour at a time, I don't know. Just take it one, one thing at a time. And I'm trying to think more positively because mm, it's so hard in this situation, in this life, in this, in this world. But I'm trying and now I am on... <laughs> so now I am on um, antidepressants um, called Zoloft. It's my second, yeah, my second, my second night using it. It's gonna be my third night, and so far it's. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, this might be the wrong one for me because I'm like feeling really tired. Um, but then again, like. It, this will do that to you, but then I don't know because one of the patients that I talked to she's like it She went through like three different kinds before she found the right one um, She said like one made her really tired one made her really like snappy. She was like yelling at the nurses Another made her like really emotional. She was just crying for no reason So I don't know, but I feel okay. It's just I'm not sleepy. But I'm just like I feel kind of loopy kind of like dreamy I don't know I'm gonna start to see a um, psychiatrist and I'm gonna be doing like therapy with doctors and I'm gonna be doing stuff on my own like coloring I'm just trying to get better this is my road to recovery <laughs> so when I was in there I didn't call anyone besides my boyfriend. Um, we had to use like this payphone in the hallway and everybody can hear your conversation. For visiting hours and visitation, um, we only get an hour. I just want to show my appreciation to the real MVP, my BF. <laughs> for driving an hour, just to only visit me for, what, 45 minutes? and for sleeping with me in the hospital in that chair <laughs> that uncomfortable chair <laughs> and just staying by my side throughout this whole thing this whole craziness and for just like being a trooper and supporting me and just like taking care of me and like i don't know how i would have made it without him <laughs> <laughs> like 
I know it was hard for him to see me go through that and it was hard being in there without him and not talking to anyone because we talked every day and you know it was hard it was very hard I know that I put him through a lot you know I'm trying to get better so thank you the nurses told me like this is the time to be or told all of us like this is the time to be selfish like just focus on yourself worry about yourself and get better so that's what I'm doing so if you have any questions just let me know I'll try to answer it um, if you're curious about anything ask me I'll try to answer I don't know much. I was only in there for two days, but it felt like two weeks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I don't know if I was helpful. I just wanted to share my experience and what I got from that experience and, you know, what I learned. This is my new best friend. <laughs> we don't like each other yet, but we will. <laughs> Maybe in my next videos, it's going to be more fun. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Bye.